Hello and welcome to another episode of the Auto Trader Podcast. My name is Wandile Sishi. And I'm George Mini. And we're back for a super interesting episode. It's kind of a build up from last week. But George, what, what essentially are we talking about today? So um, we are talking about, uh, well, we're calling the, 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 the show's name Stealth Mode. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's Stealth Mode, really. I mean, uh, I've been it watching... It doesn't get stealthier, though. I've been watching the series... Which, you know, I've only get to watch like one episode a week. Yeah. Um, I wish I was a binge watcher, but I'm not. Yeah. Um, um, the series uh, called The Peripheral. I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't. Netflix. It's, it's one of, no, no, it's uh, Amazon Prime. Um, it's, one of the, it's one of the biggest shows in South Africa at the moment called The Peripheral. Um, and, uh, um, and one of the scenes in The Peripheral is mm -hmm. there's this cloaked car. Yeah. That you can't see, like but Michael it's there. Uh, yeah, well, Michael Knight? I yeah, don't from, think from Night Rider. I'm not sure if he had like, was Night Rider ever yeah. cloaked. Like you can't see it. I mean, he had stuff. He had like um, stealth stuff. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the 70s. The 1980s. <laughs> um, so this is cloaked car. So stealth mode kind of like makes me think. You know, is that yeah. I pace? Is stealth it really mode. there? Stealth mode. But anyway, we're calling the show stealth mode. Um, but really, it's the uh, it's the it's the armored show, and uh, and we're very very very. Fortunate yeah. uh, to be joined by Michael Broom from Armor Max. Did I say that right, Michael? Correct, hundred percent. And uh, I'll, I'll give Michael a chance to to introduce himself better than I could ever introduce him. But uh, but we also have the presence of a Jaguar I Pace um, in the studio. Yeah, I think it's the first EV that's um, that's armored. I believe the first EV in the world. No, no. So first EV in South Africa, first I Pace globally. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Was, the only other EV that we know of that's <clears throat> armored is a Tesla in the states. Okay. 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 Well, I mean Tesla. Yeah. yeah. Tesla always do things first. Why? That's kind of their vibe. Um, but you know, we and I think this has got better build quality than Tesla. Have you been in a Tesla? Never, never. Mm -mm. To be fair, it's also I've right? I've can driven you, both. Can you what? Can you claim the fact that Tesla's, you know. No, I'll only I'll only accept Elon Musk as South African when he actually says yes, he's South, South African. African. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, until then, he's not South African. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will we'll do a bid and see if we can win that bid too. I've tweeted him multiple times. Doesn't tweet me back. <laughs> <laughs> he might be busy. <laughs> just well, yeah, I mean, running three companies and all, and you know, now owning Twitter. Um, so, uh, so, I mean, my personal opinion is that iPace has got a better, but a better build quality than the Tesla, um, and that's just because I've been in and driven both, and uh, I currently drive an iPace, so I'm not at all biased. Um, but uh, uh, this is another beautiful iPace, and uh, from the outside, you really have to battle to to see that this is an armored car, and. Well, you can't uh, see it. At all. I mean, to the untrained <coughs> eye, I, you know, I think that's kind of the, the plus here is to make sure that you can't see what it is. Um, but yeah, moving on. So the last thing we're going to talk about is obviously unpacking armor cars because we have seen on the site that they are becoming extremely popular. And last week we did an interesting show where we spoke about um, basically if crime pays and new trends that we've seen. Um, and that's when you actually mentioned the eye pays. So that's kind of why we're kicking this off is a, is a build up from last week and to inform people um, of the options that they have. Well, before we get into that, Michael, we've got a couple of uh, quick fire questions for you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if you could kind of like answer them without uh, giving too much thought. Okay. Um, what was your most interesting job you've ever had? So probably this one. Probably this one, I would say. I can imagine. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You get to shoot cars. <laughs> we also shoot cars, but it's a different kind of show. <laughs> uh, book or movie? <clears throat> movie. Movie, all right. In terms of vacation, bush or beach? Beach. When did you get into armored vehicle business? The armored vehicle business? About seven years ago. Seven years ago, okay. Yeah. In terms of car, internal combustion, battery electric or hybrid? You're not going to like this. <laughs> internal combustion. Ooh, must be V8. No. Uh, I'm more of a straight six guy. Straight six, interesting. Yeah, there's okay. a Bavarian brand linked to that. With must uh, like BMW. Tell you what I straight was. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a BMW, it sounds like BMW, maybe, yeah. you know, M3, the there older we version. Go. There we go. <laughs> getting warmer. <laughs> getting warmer, getting warmer. What was your first car? A Ford Laser. But mm. a Whoa. 1600 Sport. I haven't heard the word Ford Laser in years. Remember those bloody cars. <laughs> what is your current car? Uh, Defender. Yeah, Land Defender. Rover, Defender. Mm. Armored? Not yet. Not January. yet. Yeah, okay. so it's, it's a development project. So <clears throat> Interesting. Which is the next one. Mm. I think maybe the best thing to do is just to get straight into it, uh, Michael. I think maybe if you can just tell us what is armoring a car, what is an armored car, 
um, and some of the work that you guys do at Armored Max just to give people um, a little bit of understanding of, of the concept of, of Armored vehicles. Sure. Um, so basically what an Armored car does is it's a last line of defense, if I can put it that way, when every other method has failed. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking about attacks on cars like hijacking, kidnapping, smash and grabs, uh, bricks being thrown off bridges and so forth. Yeah. Um, so we'll always tell people, be alert, be aware of your surroundings, get off your phone while you're driving, as you've said before, use the defensive driving techniques. But at some point, all of that runs out and perhaps a bit of luck runs out. Yeah. And this gives you an opportunity to be safe in an attack and be able to get away with your life. So we don't give you a, a, something as, like a tank to go to war with. We're just giving you an opportunity to be protected and safe. And the way we do it, um, as George says, we, we do it as discreetly as possible. Mm. So it's not flashy. Um, it doesn't draw attention. It's supposed to look like every other car on the road. So if I put that eye pace next to George's eye pace, you wouldn't be able to tell me which one is armored, aside from the fact that his is bright red. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, so that's the concept. Um, in terms of what we do, we're very focused on the luxury side of the market. So we don't really get involved with cash and transit and security vehicles and, and that sort of thing. So well, those, are, those are a little bit more... Um, but or more less aesthetic. Yeah, it's less aesthetically pleasing. Correct. Uh, you know, and you've got, you know, you've got literally, you can't open the window and the and this glass is like glued onto that window. Correct, or yeah. Maybe it's not, yeah. but... Well, it, it's very obvious. <clears throat> and yeah. in a security environment, that is necessary. Um, yeah. So you do want to intimidate a would-be attacker mm. and let them know that they've got very little chance of success. Um, you know, generally where an armored car has been attacked, the attacker doesn't know it's armored and yeah. they get a bigger surprise than the, the person inside the car. Um, but that said, you know, we're often asked, well, who do we sell to? Who do yeah. we build cars for? And people often say, well, I'm not a crook or I'm not wanted. I'm not high profile, so I don't need an armored car. That's absolute rubbish. By and large, the people we deal with are looking to protect life and assets. Yeah, uh, their loved ones, etc. So, um, I'd say more than fifty percent are people that can afford to leave South Africa, want to leave South Africa, but choose to stay. Okay. So this just allows them to enjoy the wonderful South African lifestyle that we have. Yeah. And be safe. You know, we've we've secured our homes, we've secured our businesses, we live in the states, we careful about what we do. Yeah. Where we're most at risk is on the road because it's a dynamic environment, you're in a transitionary space, you can't control it, so what do you do? This is the solution. Do you have any uh, stories for us in, in terms of previous customers who this has been a solution that's actually saved their lives? Oh, so many. Um, the most yeah. recent one was a, a gentleman in a Range Rover that was in a hijacking in Midrand. Sunday evening, um, and the tactics they use these days are quite scary. Mm. Um, so not not that particular one, but uh, very similar. Yeah. Um, yeah, boxed in from both sides, uh, had attackers in all four corners. Wow. Um, pointed a gun at him, and he hesitated for a split second. He didn't realize what was going on. You, you, until you're in that situation, you don't know how you react. And they opened fire. Um, and he managed to drive away. He bashed through the car in front of him, and he's still here. Oh. Um, what was wonderful is he came to see us the Monday morning. Um, we were called that night right after it happened, so he, you won't believe it, this is what's happened, and blah, 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 blah. I mean, his car was armored five years ago, so you kind of forget about it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but that's the whole point, right? You want to forget about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to know it's there no. until you need it. Yeah. Um, he came to us on Monday morning. We pulled all the guys out the factory and said, come see what you do every day matters and see it in action and meet the man whose life you saved. Um, quite a tearful experience that actually. Yeah, I mean, I mean was, that's like, uh, how, how, many people, how many people you got uh, working so in at the business? factory just shy of 100. Okay, so you've yeah. got, you got 100 people who now ha uh, can see the purpose for which yeah. they, they work every day. Correct. You know, and uh, I suppose that's not going to happen very often. Um, it does happen quite a lot. That's the, the scary part. I was saying to Wendy before the show, you know, at the end of January, we would have built 1,627 vehicles. Okay, so, so so if you're saying it's that, happening more and more often. So, yeah. so oh. of that, 24 that we know of have survived attacks. Oh, wow. Okay? So if you put that into statistics of hijacking and versus how many cars are on the road, it's much the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, hijacking is just rife. 
And would you say that crime is is definitely causing? Are you, is business growing? Essentially, is what I'm asking in terms of. Um, well, crime will it affect our business? Yeah, um, I mean, much the same as load shedding affects takeaways. It's yeah. um, it, it is going to to increase. So whenever there's a major incident that's very public, like a CIT or a hijacking video, which there's one daily now, yeah, um, it will spark an inquiry. Someone will get in touch with us, um, and often that's a catalyst for a customer coming to see us. At, at very first, is something's happened. They're scared. They want to know what are my options. Yeah. You know, yeah. we the family wants to leave. They want to go to Australia, the UK, the States. I don't want to leave. I have businesses. I have people relying on me. What do I do? Yeah. Uh, and that's where they kind that's of start. Starts. Yeah. So recently, George, I don't know if you saw the story about a very high profile. Um, I think it was a murder case. Um, it was a DJ, mm-hmm. and he was driving. I think it was a, the new Golf GTI. 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 Correct. Um, is that something in terms of vehicle types? What what's the limitations? Is it, it, in a scenario where I have a GTI and he was in that scenario, can you arm a GTI, for instance? And, and funny you ask. So we, as of this morning, we're finishing off our first Golf Eight GTI. Okay. Um, when I say Golf Eight, it's not our first Golf of the Golf Seven range. We did, I think, eight examples uh, for one of our bigger dealer customers, which proved very popular because it's light. Yeah, you can use a small engine. I mean, we we used a 1.4 for one of the the variants we did of the Golf Seven, and very popular vehicle. Um, so yeah, that car would have saved his life. Oh wow! So what do we have here? I mean, uh, um, so we've got two pieces so of glass. So that leads us into the different armoring levels, um, which is always a question that comes up. So primarily, we're involved in a B4 or a B6 level. To explain the B ratings, that's a European rating. It's used globally for what type of round um, the armoring can withstand, which also depends which are, on which are these little the critters. Yeah, yeah. Right. So there you've got a nine mil, um, which is the primary round that's used in any hijacking attack or uh, violent crime in South Africa. That's from an AK. How many hijackings use AK versus handguns? Do you know? I couldn't really it, tell you. I mean, no, it's most, mostly handguns. From what, from what we see. Um, <clears throat> in the attacks that, uh, that are, are happening and in, in the crime stats that we see. So obviously we've got an inside track, so a lot of things that happen. Yeah. Um, more so it's R4 and R5 that are being used. Okay. And there's a particular round that's made its way into the country, which is a steel core round. Yeah. Um, which is a very ugly thing. So it, that other bullet that you've got there with a the green tip. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that round will go through this most- It's an armor piercing armor. round. Armour piercing is not quite the correct description, mm. but it is able to go through some armour. So okay. we've done some upgrades to our B6 armour so that it stops that particular round. Um, so that's more cash and transit, those sorts of things, or where there's a, a hit. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that, that is a reality of South Africa too. Um, we found those rounds. So AK is not really the scariest thing um, that we deal with. There is a prevalence of them as well. So like I was saying to Wendy, you know, if you're trying to predict against hijacking, general crime and so forth, the B4 is more than enough because it's a handgun. It can be concealed. You can't see it. They can surprise you. Yes. And if someone's walking between cars with mm. an R5 with an in R5, their hand, it's kind of giving the game away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. With a handgun, you see it at the last second. Yes. Yeah. So you don't necessarily need a B6 if you're trying to predict against that, which is the majority of what we do. So you do need a B6, and that's the the big piece of glass that's in front of you. Okay. That goes to 42 millimeters thick. Wow. So that's in a case of high profile. This is guys that are being targeted. That's heavy. Um, It is. is. So so this I-PACE is B4. That's a B4. Which is this thickness of 21 millimeter glass. glass, When they still go down, and it's not like you're in a cage or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the so so this piece of glass is. Is it normal glass or is it a treated glass? You know, what's, what's the difference here besides the thickness itself? Okay, so it's, I mean, you can go thick and it'll get yeah. stronger, but... Well, yeah, so it's, it's ballistic glass. So the way it's basically made is very different and it's built in layers. So you'll see if, if you look at it from a side yeah. profile, you've got different layers of glass and in between them is a, a bonding or a laminate. Okay. Um, so that all together is what makes it... So bulletproof. Yeah. So the way it works is as a round hits the surface, it's yeah. supposed to dissipate energy. So it's absorbing impact. Same as a crumple zone would in a car. Yeah. So you're not stopping it. <clears throat> it's impossible to stop. You can't stop energy. You can only transfer it. Yeah. So I suppose so it's a exactly similar principle to if you hang a very loose sheet 
uh, and you shoot at it, mm. um, quite often the, the the sheet will slow the bullet down enough to Correct. and you not, won't have a hole. You won't have a hole in it's it. Similar in in, yeah. in concept, but we're basically just stopping energy. So the glass just cracks and cracks and cracks and cracks. And how many rounds could it take? Would you say before it's you so know. to be graded as a B4, it needs to take three rounds in a 120 millimeter nucleus. Okay, um, 120 in, millimeters. So that's yeah, probably a little bit smaller than that. About that. Yeah. Oh, a little bit smaller than that. Yeah. Okay. So so you've got this little circle, and you you have to shoot three rounds in that circle with no penetration. Yeah, you need to be quite a crack shot to get <laughs> yeah. three yeah. rounds. And our hijackers aren't on the shooting ranges every week and practicing. <laughs> so they, so, so if you exactly if you do you know very dispersed shots, you could do a lot. You could do more than three. Absolutely. And it will not get through the I glass. Mean, in in practice, we've seen seven, eight more rounds. We've seen clips emptied. Mm. Um, which is anything between nine and fifteen rounds in a nine mil. And in many instances, and they, those guns they malfunction. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of the cabin, how much of the car is um, bulletproof or armored? So no. we do the whole cabin. Um, the idea is to create a cocoon around you, and we don't want any ballistic gaps. Yeah. Okay, and as I say, you're not always dealing with professionals, so it's a spray and pray type of attack. Um, or when you move away, they're still firing, etc. So you don't need a round that comes through your B pillar or underneath by your door, et cetera. So we armor everything. Yeah. Um, we often get requests to armor just a driver's window or a windscreen. We don't do it on principle. Mm. Um, the principle is the same as if you're installing security in your home. You won't put burglar bars on all windows but one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's either secure or it's not. Chain is as bad as its weakest link, right? So Exactly that. Yeah. So the doors are done, um, every pillar is done. There's a number of overlap areas that, that we use as well. Uh, you can armor the roof. When we go up to B6 level, that's quite more complicated. There we use a lot more ballistic steel uh, as opposed to the lightweight stuff. Uh, then we do the firewall. We do underneath the car for grenade attacks. The roof has to be done. Yeah. Uh, we build a partition behind the, the back seats in SUVs, which is generally what we armor in a B6. Uh, run flat tires are installed. We put a push-to-torque intercom system in so that you can talk to somebody outside the car without having to wind down your window. Um, and yeah, there, there's, yeah, the sky's the limit. There's, there are many other things that we can do, have been requested to do. Yeah. Uh, fire suppression systems, uh, internal oxygen systems, all of those wow. sorts of things. Yes, the shocking door handles, people have asked us <laughs> for that too. <laughs> It's never I'm, a I'm great idea. I think it's <laughs> there was a uh, guy who put a, a flamethrower. Flame, that, that was in the 1980s, I think. 1990s. 1990s. Yeah. No, he still got burn wounds from that. So <laughs> just tell you how effective <laughs> that was. Um, so, so cost of cost of. I mean, this is a this is a B4 uh, graded armored vehicle. Uh, is that the right term? Graded. It's, yeah, yeah B4 certified, grade certified yeah. um, armored vehicle. Um, so you know, in for all intents and purposes, it will give you enough time to get off the scene of the crime. Correct. Effect. And that's all you need is, you know, if anybody is getting more than one or two rounds fired at the car at close range, then you haven't pushed the accelerator fast enough mm. and you've kind of like gone frozen, mm. which some people happen to. Mm. So, you know, so, so you've got a little bit more protection than just one mm. shot at you, but then you've got the opportunity to get away. Correct. Um, and I suppose the nice thing about an EV is that you can't stall it. So, you know, you put your foot on the gas and it's, it's gone. Yeah, exactly that. Um, and if, for example, you know, like people think that if you shoot the engine, the car stops immediately. In practical terms, it doesn't. doesn't. Um, but if you shoot at the engine bay in an EV, you might take out the starter hit. battery or something else. But yeah, yeah uh, I, I, I think, to be honest, just from the response we've had from this car, EV and, and armored cars, two trends that have finally met, I think it's going to continue to grow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what is the cost of doing what we, what we see standing okay. in the studio? So yeah. For this level car from about 700,000, when we go up to B6, that starts at 1.3 million, goes up to about 1.7 for most SUVs. Uh, and then if there's bespoke work that we need to do in a car, which we have done before, then again, sky's the limit. Um, you know, our team are professional fabricators. Uh, we use the word bespoke a lot because every single car we build is different yeah. Yeah. Um, and presents a new challenge. This one in particular was uh, quite challenging. Um, so it's expensive. We make no mistake about that. Um, if you come and visit our offices, for example, you'll see there's nothing flashy about us. We don't have big fish ponds and waterfalls mm. and big <laughs> screens. And what you yeah. pay for is going into your car. Yeah. Uh, and the reason it's expensive is the materials that we use. So 
we have a no compromise approach. So it's the best of what's available globally or it's nothing. Mm. Um, so we source, for example, our glass comes from South America, which is the capital of armored cars. Um, I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you there? Um, our lightweight armoring, the aramid, comes from the States. Our ballistic steel comes from uh, Sweden or Switzerland. I can never remember. I always think they're the same country. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, he, that's the one side of it is the material cost and then the labor that goes into it. It's the skill that goes into it to be able to pull a car apart and then make it bulletproof yeah. and put it back together and work. That and still be aesthetically the same as what you yeah. got it out of the showroom Correct. because that's what you guys aim for, right? So how long does Correct. it take to do this? So to, for a B4, about 20 working days. Okay. Um, yeah. And a B655 working days, but that's an estimate. You know, We build cars to a standard, not a date. Um, so you get your car back when we're happy with it. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we, one, certify that it's safe and two, certify that it's met our expectations, which are very high, then we hand the car over to the customer. Let's um, talk about um, maybe insurance and, and financing since we're on the topic mm -hmm. of, of costs. So is there facilities to kind of get financing for this? Do you guys do internal financing, for, for instance, anything like that? Unfortunately not. Um, so the banks in terms of traditional finance will finance a vehicle based on equity. Okay. So it's if you default, what can I get back for it so that the bank's not at risk? So they don't see the full value in the armoring package. They feel that the car devalues, which... In, is that true, though? In truth, is absolutely not true. You know, I mean, we've got one big customer, which is a customer of Auto Trader, and um, um, who who really kind of does this as a I don't know if it's a hobby or a or a, or, or purposeful. Mm. Um, but uh, um, but in in your experience with them, because they're obviously also a customer of yours, mm. is is that true, um, or does the car actually appreciate? Car does appreciate, and quite significantly, and quite well down the road so yeah. in, in terms of future resale because the market is growing the way it is and the demand is growing yeah we've seen so many anecdotal evidence of cars being sold for the same as the original price or more mm. yeah mm. because the, obviously the cost of component goes up yes with the exchange rate etc etc so the model is much the same as a normal car market where the new car is getting more expensive the used car holds its value. Yes. Where the new car is not available in supply. The used car goes up in value, etc. Exactly. We've seen yeah, all of those. All of those. Uh, it applies you know, equally to, work. to armored cars. The, the issue is, as I said, the banks don't see the value in terms of risk. I think that will change um, yeah. because globally that does happen. In Canada, you can finance an armored car. Um, in most of South America, you can. In the States, you can. Well, I think I think in South Africa they they still judging a car like this in terms of its base model without mm. the armoring, and uh, and it's just it's so just they'll not finance true. the car, yeah, no problem. But the, what they're saying is if you default, they're at hundred percent risk for the armoring, which isn't true. Isn't true. But they listen. They hold the money. They make mm. the rules. Mm. So that will change with time. So this, I mean, this I pace the HSC. I know it's two point two million rand. Um, that's what one of those costs right now, mm. um, which is, you, you know, you're adding 750,000 Rand to the car, which is about a 30% increase in the, in the value. Um, and I'm pretty sure that, I mean, what, what is the, what, what is the value of the car that you armor the most? Is it in the 2 million Rand range? Is it the 1 million Rand cars or, you know, what, what are the, uh, what are the average values of the cars you armor? It's quite varied, but if I had to Guess on a price tag, I would say between one and a half and two million. Okay, so so the so the twenty to thirty percent additional cost mm. on the car is is really what a consumer is looking mm. at, um, in terms of the market that you currently um, service, um, and uh, um, and then that pushes the cost of this car to two point eight million, mm. um, um, roughly. Um, and uh, I think if you if you can afford a two million rand car, uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand rand to Mm. save your life yeah. is probably worth it. I mean, you've kind of, you were telling us a story about uh, a scenario where someone was attacked twice um, in the same vehicle. Mm. So, you know, um, I think on that, you know, on that point, I think it, it's definitely worth it. Definitely. Uh, so before we, before we end this, the, the, the other little things, uh, you know, lying around you, I can't reach them now, Wendy, but, uh, but, but what are these? So that, what you're holding there, Wendy, is the lightweight armor we use in the B6. So that will go into the doors. So we try and save as much weight oh, wow, that's very light. as possible. Uh, so what is this so, made of? So that's an ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene. Oh, wow. 
Uh, and that's got a ceramic strike face on it as well. So uh, to give you an idea, the, the strike face that we use, if we use a hardness scale of 10, where diamond is 10, that would be a nine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And this is, this is man-made, manufactured? Yes, uh, okay, highly so compressed, heated up, yeah. um, and then we can apply it in 10 bits in, into the doors, etc. Okay. And what am I looking at? Yeah. So that is ballistic steel. That's uh, what we use in our builds. Is this in, in that B6? car? No. So no. There's no steel in that car. Okay. So when you go up to a B6, because of what you're trying to stop, okay. um, and the massive difference in energy between a rifle round and a handgun round, okay. you do need to use a lot more... Um, Stronger stuff. <laughs> Stronger stuff. <laughs> okay, what is this? So that is our B4 armor. So ah. you can feel it's light, ah. you can twist light, it. Yeah. So yes. we can apply it very easily to all panels. Um, and that's the big weight saving that we can now B4. So what is this made of? So that is an aramid substance. So it's basically in concept similar to Kevlar. Yeah. Uh, it's just a little bit stronger. It's got a higher weave pattern. Um, same thing, it's layered, compressed, bonded, and then applied into the panels. I have two final questions before you leave. And then, uh, uh, sorry, Wendy, before <laughs> yeah. we go, there's a thicker version of the steel. So that mean? is the traditional ballistic steel, which is what used to protect what you just held in your hand. Feel the difference in the weight. Wow. Uh, I can't reach it there once. So wait, this is, when you say traditional, do you mean before so, the... Oh, wow. So this has yeah. replaced so what our, by this. Um, what the big four manufacturers that build their own armored cars use Yeah. versus what we use. And this stops the same. Wow. Right? And I mean, that's significant. Weight, yeah. yeah, that's that's really significant. So we had some. We obviously we knew you're coming, so we had to ask around. Like, what do you what do you want to know from someone who armors a car? And one of the things is, how do you know you're not selling an armored vehicle, for instance, to someone who is on the opposite end of the oh, nice question. That's a very good question. Um, we don't. So you know, a criminal can take the form of somebody who runs a gang or who's stealing money from his own company. You're talking about a getaway um, car. So <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> well, do do yeah, they rob yeah, banks you, nowadays? You don't, but it, it's, you know, a lot of our customers, if I can put them in a basket, are entrepreneurs. They own their own businesses. They're protecting their families. Yeah. Um, they're not dodgy guys. They, they yeah. People like you and me. They have the means. They can afford it. You want to protect life. It makes absolute sense to do it, like you said. Yeah. Okay. And the last one is in a scenario where I've rolled my car and I'm stuck inside of it and now I'm just a sitting duck. Um, what if the criminals go away now and then the jaws of life needs to be used to apply to kind of take me out? Is that something that um, nice. is not kind of a barrier? Not at all. So any of the extraction equipment they use can still be used on the glass or the armor. So yeah. it's, again, it's, it's designed to stop bullets. Um, it's not designed Dissipate to do energy. anything yeah. else really. Okay. So if I can give you another analogy... Um, you guys are both F1 fans. Mm. So if you look at suspension of an F1 car, it works brilliantly up and down. But if you hit it on the side, it crumbles. Breaks. Mm. True. So it all has its fallibilities, but it's for what it's designed to do, it does. Yeah. Okay. So you won't be like stuck in the end. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's been absolutely fascinating to have you here, Michael. Anything we've left out that you think is important for the public to know about armored vehicles? <sighs> you know, it, Sadly, you know, our passion is saving lives. Um, we are petrol heads at yeah. our core, but that's straight that is, six BMW. <laughs> you, know, you, gotta, exactly. you, you picked it up. <laughs> um, sadly, we can't help everyone because of what it costs. So, you know, we do spend a lot of time educating people on being aware and, and so forth. And, and, you know, they say prevention is better than cure, awareness. awareness is a simple thing you need to have both in your homes, in your cars, wherever you are. Do you think the technology is going to reach a point where the cost of doing this is going to come down? Materials are going to become cheaper? I think it's very much exchange rate based. So, okay. you know, if you're in the States, it's obviously a lot cheaper for you. Yes. Um, or in South America and, and so forth. So it depends what the RAND does really. Okay. Um, but no, it, it's not sort of, a, you know, electronic technology does that. Yes. Um, this stuff is expensive to source, to make. It, it, I suppose it, it's heavy to bring so. across the oceans. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's heavy materials, except for this yeah. stuff. I mean, this well, it gets, it, all of our stuff gets flown in. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, you bring across the air anyway, yeah. but uh, it's still weight dependent. Uh, you know, you've got to bring exactly. it in containers. So now I, I don't think it will get cheaper. There are cheaper options that don't do the job. Um, so that's also something we deal with all the time is don't shop on price, shop on result. Mm. Yeah. Come and see us um, if you're in the market for wanting to armor a car and we'll explain everything to you. We've, we've had half an hour. I can carry on for hours. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it's intricate and there's a solution for everybody. 
Well, that's pretty much all the time we have for. But if you want some more information with regards to the cars that Armax has, we do have um, some of the vehicles on site. We'll leave a description to you. Put all the links in the in the description below. Like right. and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Michael. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>